Some of the best web hosts out there do not offer email service. And so I'm gonna show you how to separate your email from your web hosting so that you can use one of the better hosts. Okay, I like Cloudways web hosting. It's what I use myself and I've moved a lot of clients to Cloudways. Now, one of the things that always comes up when I move a client to Cloudways is what do we do with their email? Because Cloudways does not offer email service, okay? And some other really good hosts out there like WP Engine and Kinsta, they don't offer email service either. Um, and usually what you'll find with the all-in-ones like SiteGround and HostGator and these guys is they kind of try to do everything and they do offer email service. The thing is, for a few different reasons, it's usually not the best idea to have everything under one roof. The other thing is that you're typically going to find that your best web hosts, the ones that are going to give you the best site performance and really do the best job, are not going to offer email service. Okay, So for that reason, we need to be able to separate our email service for our domain and our web hosting so that we use two different companies. Now I want to make a quick word about the cost because I've seen some people and their first reaction to when you have to pay for hosting and then you have to pay for email services are like, well, that seems like it's going to cost more. They don't want the additional cost. Um, I will say that generally speaking, this does not cost you more uh, because first of all, you're going to get a much higher quality email service in most cases than what you're going to get through an all-in-one host. Okay, So that's first and foremost. Those guys don't specialize in email. When you use somebody who actually does, you just get a better experience it's going to work a lot more seamlessly. Second thing is, especially when we're talking about a web host like Cloudways, you're going to get so much more horsepower for your money than you're going to get uh, through an all-in-one service like Bluehost or HostGator or SiteGround. It's just because when you're on a virtual private server through Cloudways, you're going to, A, your bill will be cheaper. Secondly, you're getting much more horsepower, more memory dedicated to everything. Uh, as a VPS server, you're not sharing resources with everybody else. You can host multiple sites on the same server without any problem. Um, unlike WP Engine and Kinsta and these guys, you're not being capped by how many uh, sites you can have, how many uh, you you know how much traffic you can have and things like that. It's basically, um, you know, <laughs> you're just giving more power for the money and you can do more with it. So you combine that with a fairly small cost of actually having to host your, your uh, email someplace else, it's not that big of a deal. And generally speaking, you're just going to get much better service on both accounts, often for less money. Okay, so let's get into how this works. Now, I want to be clear. This is not supposed to be a whole teaching thing on how domains work, okay? But I just want to cover the absolute basics here real quick so you kind of understand how we can separate web hosting from our email list hosting. So you know that when you go to buy a domain, you're going to go to a registrar like Namecheap or GoDaddy or wherever the heck you bought your domains, okay? Now, your domain, once you own it, you're going to be able to, in some places, you can actually control all of of your settings for your domain in one spot. In other cases, what you're going to do is you're going to plug in two what's called name servers into your settings for that domain, and it's going to tell, uh, basically, tell the world where all the settings are for your domain, which is going to control where things point, okay? Now, when it comes to settings, you have something called domain name service or DNS. And so you're gonna have domain name settings, essentially, uh, that's just gonna be a bunch of little rows of different types. It's gonna basically tell the world, tell all the servers around the internet that control where domain names go. It's gonna tell the world where your server is, where your email is supposed to go, and stuff like that. And so you are probably controlling your DNS settings at your actual web host. In some cases, you might control your DNS settings from a third party like Cloudflare, which is what I use. So there's a lot of different ways of doing this. But you'll go, when you go to your domain name settings, you'll see that there's a bunch of rows and there's a different types of records, okay? So there's an A record where you're basically telling the world where your server is, essentially. It's gonna be an IP address, a bunch of numbers, and you're basically saying, whenever anybody points to my domain in their web browser, send them to that IP address. It tells the world where your site is hosted. There's another type of record called a C name record. Basically, it's the exact same thing as an A record, except instead of an IP address, you're giving the name of another server, okay? That's basically what that is. Now, when it comes to email, since that's the topic we're talking about here, there's a record called the MX record. 
Now, with an MX record, it stands for email exchange. And essentially, you're telling the world where your email goes, okay? So it's different. You know, you're do you have that domain name. It's kind of like this thing out in the internet that, that's for you. And you have your web traffic that can go one direction, and you've got your email traffic that can go another direction. They do not have to be the same company. If you're using a web host like SiteGround or HostGator, good chance they are going to the same company, but they don't need to. And that that is how and why we can use a different email service. So we can use send our A records and our C name to Cloudways, send the email to whatever else we decide to pick. Okay, that's how it's going to work. Now, in terms of who you want to use as your email, it's completely up to you. You can pick any email service that you want. Now, I just wanted to run through some of the most popular ones. First of all, I want to start off with FastMail at FastMail.com. These are the guys that I personally use. I really like these guys. Um, it, at, when I switched over to them, it was part, mainly because I wanted to stop using Google services. I just kind of didn't want to be reliant on Google in any way, shape, or form. And so I went over to FastMail, and they have I'll show you the interface in a bit but basically they've got a full calendar they got a contact list it's a very robust application i do manage the entire thing inside of this email um, interface here however you can also use an email client so if i wanted to pull it down into outlook or apple mail or whatever you could do that as well but i actually really like the web uh, interface and that's what i use now the cool thing i like about fastmail is that i can route all of my domains to it okay i've also get a fastmail.com address but i just barely ever use it but uh, you can have a lot of different domains all coming in here set up rules filter them as you want put them into folders you have a lot of control so it's a very robust application and that's at fastmail okay and as far as pricing um i yeah i'm on the standard plan so and i pay annually so basically i pay 50 bucks for a year okay um and so and it's a pretty good deal you get 30 gigabytes of storage too which is an awful lot okay now another really popular option is of course google now so basically if you use google workspace which is the business side of google then basically you're getting google's apps gmail calendar all those things except that you're getting them mapped to your actual domain name so this is different than gmail because gmail is the free side and you can't map you cannot map your domain name to gmail but with Google Workspace, you can. And so basically you're getting Gmail, except that it's all of your domain-based email in there. Um, and uh, if you like the way that Gmail works, then this might be a good option for you to use. And the pricing, I haven't even looked in a long time. Uh, let's see what we got here. I guess it starts at six bucks. It's a little bit more expensive than Fastmail, but of course it's got a lot of different things in here that Fastmail does not have. So if those are important to you, go for it. But I really only care about the email and the calendar myself. Another popular option is Zoho Mail, okay? Now Zoho does other things as well, but their email service is pretty popular. Has a lot of, you know, the standard email functionality that you might expect. They've got the web interface, all these things. And so you could check it out and see if this might work out for you. Their pricing is actually quite favorable. You can get the um, for $1 per month per user. Now, you're only getting 5 gigabytes, but that might be absolutely plenty for you. Um, and so that works out to just 12 bucks a year. That's pretty cheap, okay? So that's a, a pretty uh, good option there for you. Um, another one I want to mention, specifically in the case of Cloudways, is that they do have an add-on. It's through Rackspace, okay? So Rackspace is a different company, but Cloudways does have an add-on where inside of your Cloudways account, you can actually set up this add-on and it will automatically map actually you might have to still put a few things into your dns but it basically will set up an email account for you through rackspace you can manage your email inboxes inside of cloudways in terms of setting up your um, your email addresses and all those kinds of things and then you're basically using rackspace email i mean you go to rackspace emails website here um, and this is exactly what you're going to be getting and all the power that it has now um, and they're Pricing is a little bit more. I think, yeah, it's a $2.99 per user per month. But the thing is, as a Cloudways customer, you're only going to be paying $1 per email address per month. So you're definitely getting a discount there. And it's a pretty good service overall.
Now with any of these services, the setup is basically going to be the same. It can vary a little bit based on the interface, but essentially you're going to go and you're going to set up your domain inside of your new uh, email service. And then it's going to give you the settings to add to your domain name. Okay. So, so like, for example, when I go to into my Fastmail account, I can go to add a new domain. I just type in my donate, my uh, domain name, and it's just basically going to walk me through the whole darn thing. It'll give me the exact, uh, what's called MX records to add to your domain so that it knows where to point the email. It'll give you some other things in order to authorize uh, the use of that application on your email. So some things like SPF records and stuff like that, not to get too nerdy, but essentially it's going to give you the server entries and you just go to your, your DNS settings and you copy and paste them. That's all there is to it. Now, one little pro tip I will give you, just out of experience, um, is that if you're worried about losing anything, like when you're about to change your DNS settings, and you're like, oh my God, am I going to break something? Here's what you do. You just take a screenshot of your DNS settings before you change anything, okay? So you got a little record of it and then go ahead and do what your email provider tells you, make those changes hit the save button. What's going to happen is it'll take a little bit for those changes to take effect. All right. It's normal. Uh, in some cases, it's really fast. In other cases, you might have to wait several hours for it to actually happen. But if you find that something went wrong and something broke, you've got the screenshot. You could just go put the DNS settings back the way they were. Nothing will break. Trust me, editing DNS entries is not nearly as scary as you think. Once you've done it a few times, you just start doing it in your sleep. Okay. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, uh, but that's how you do it. And then once those MX records are pointing uh, domain-based email to your new provider and you've got the, the authorization stuff set in there, um, then basically inside of your interface, you just now start setting up your email addresses. You can pretty much create as many of them as you want based on your domain name and, and set up your rules and everything that you might expect. So once it's set up, there's one final thing you're going to want to do, and that is you're going to want to import your email from the old place to the new place. Okay, so if you're coming from another web host, some SiteGround, HostGator, Bluehost, some all-in-one, and you had your email with them, well, you're going to want to move it, okay? Because when you go to cancel your old web host, you're going to lose all your email otherwise. Now, the good thing is moving all your email is actually super duper easy. Um, basically, you're going to you're going to treat your new email program sort of like a web client, as if it's Outlook or something like that. And you're going to give it the settings for your, your old account. They're going to be usually called IMAP settings, which is just an email protocol. So you'll give it the IMAP server that they will give you and a username and password and stuff to get into your account. And basically, your new provider is just going to log into the old provider and suck all of it over. And that's basically all it is. You sit there and you wait for it. It'll chug. And then once it's in there, you'll have all of your email in the new location. Uh, and complete with the whole folder structure and the labels and everything. I mean, basically, you don't lose anything at all. It's all going to be in there. And then once you verify you got everything, you can pretty much shut down the old email account anytime you want. Now, let me quickly just show you inside the Fastmail interface. You'll kind of just see how easy they really walk you through it really well. So here we are inside of the fast mail settings area. You get all kinds of different things in here. Uh, but under import and setup, you can see they've literally got stuff in here to, to import easily from a lot of the, the really uh, popular providers from Gmail, from Google Workspace, Outlook, Office 365, like all the common ones. But then you got this one here. So if you're coming from another web host, that's a typical all in one. What's going to probably happen is you're going to need to use this little other option because you're going to be using IMAP. Now, IMAP is just the standard email protocol. It's the, basically the way that everything works. In this case, you're going to plug in your email address and your password. And in many cases, it will be smart enough to figure out the rest all by itself. Now, alternatively, as it says, you can configure manually. Pop on over here. Uh, you can get your IMAP server, which, of course, your web host will give you. You don't have to figure that out on your own. It will. They'll give it to you. You can just copy and paste it in here. Sometimes they'll tell you a different port number, just do whatever they say. Uh, and then you plug in your email address and your password, log in and 
basically that's it. You just wait for fast mail to sit there and import everything. And then when you go to your box, it'll all be done. Okay. And then all you got to do after that is go over to your domains and you could just go ahead and set it up. You'd add domain and enter it and it'll tell you exactly what to do. It'll give you all the settings. You can see that I've got four domains being routed into my fast mail account right now. Um, Blog Marketing Academy, of course, being the main one. And it works great. And I can manage all these emails all from one interface without having to go back and forth or anything like that. It's super easy. Okay, so that's about it. It's not a very complicated thing to do, but again, if uh, I may have actually brought you to this video, if you're one of my clients and I'm we're migrating you to Cloudways right now, and I'm like, well, we're gonna have to move your email too, uh, this is how you do it, okay? Now, if you don't wanna do it yourself, I can help you do it. We've got technical services here. So just put a credit on your account and I'll just migrate your email for you and I'll get the whole thing and your domain all working. No big deal. Um, and um, so it, it's not a difficult thing. More than likely also, you, you'll have your support people that can help you with that if you want to. Um, but it's really pretty simple when you get right down to it. Again, if you're switching over to Cloudways, the simplest option is probably gonna be their Rackspace add-on, their email add-on. Um, but you don't have to use that. I use Fastmail. Lots of people use Google Workspace. A lot of people use Zoho. Pick your poison. You can pick whatever email service you want. The, the settings, and, and, or sorry, the, uh, the process of migrating is going to be the exact same regardless of what email service that you wish to use. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know.